set. Louder, louder, even still. And then here we go. This should be better now. Low battery? Are you kidding me? I just charged these batteries. Oh my God. How do I exit? Oh my goodness. How come I don't know how to use these mics? Okay, hold on, I'm muting myself. Oh boy, this song is ending, which means I've got to come on soon. <laughs> oh boy. This might be something of a disaster today. I should warn everybody in advance. Uh, I've got a lot of new tech going here, and I'm going to play the next song. Uh, I'm going to switch the camera to me in about one minute. Um, oh, I need my headphone. <laughs> I'm walking around here looking for, okay, ah, here I found a headphone, ah, I stepped on something, oh, that hurts. <laughs> very, this is very professional, professional setup. Okay. Okay, now. Oh my goodness, I think, I think I might be ready to go here. I'm switching to me. Hi, well, I might be brighter. Good morning. Oh, it's it the morning? It's 10.37 a.m. Welcome, this is The Coding Train. With me, your host, Daniel <clears throat> Schiffman. With the train whistle, it doesn't work very well. Let's check to see if my whiteboard camera is working. Almost no chance of this. Yeah, that's not, that's not a positive sign. I guess I will not be demonstrating that today. Uh, welcome. Um, I'm, I'm having a bit of a slow start. Um, as some of you might be aware, um, I am in a new studio. I'm in a garage. It's quite a large space. I wonder how the echo is right now. I've got some, I've, I've been buying a lot of new stuff. I've got a new light, which I would love to show you, but look, the camera that I, I'm gonna do some behind the scenes stuff at some point. I've got a new light, I've got another new light that I didn't set up yet. I've got some sound blankets to help with the echo. I've got sound foam that I need to put maybe on the ceiling that will also help. Um, and uh, hello to Italy, uh, says Alex uh, in the chat. Uh, buongiorno. Did I get that anywhere <laughs> close to correct? Ciao! Okay, maybe that's a little bit. Ah! I think there's a dead cicada on the ground over here. We're kind of in a semi-outdoor space, which is sort of fun. Gloria Pickle, my lovely pup, is over there sitting in the grass. I can see her out of the corner of my eye. Mm. I think this might be a total disaster of a stream, but uh, I, I, it is still <laughs> sponsored. So, oh, let me go over here and say uh, thank you, before I forget, to the sponsor of today's uh, Coding Train stream. Uh, brilliant, brilliant is like the place on the internet where I love to just soak up and learn lots of new stuff. Uh, in many interactive lessons, computer science, physics, um, there's this course called Beautiful Geometry, which is amazing. It gives me lots of ideas of things to code in P5. You can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash coding train. Um, and if you want to unlock all of their uh, courses and features, um, if you go through that link, 
you will get 20% off. The first 200 people to do so will get 20% off from the coding train. I've been buying a lot of new equipment. <laughs> it's expensive. And so by signing up, by going to that link, you're kind of helping me out and kind of keeping the train running here. Uh, all right, let me go back to this view. Um, so um, one thing that's a little bit tricky right now is that I am on a new home internet connection. Uh, back when I was in uh, streaming from Brooklyn, New York, I had a fiber connection, which was fairly reliable and high speed. I have paid for the most expensive <laughs> internet that I could get, but out here, um, there is no fiber. Uh, there's a lot of, there's not, that's just like uh, not as much uh, internet. <laughs> so it's a little touch and go. Um, but let's see how it goes today. If I have to come up with a different solution, I shall. Um, you know, I had really hoped to be up and running more quickly. I don't know if this is really going to come into fruition, but I'm putting this into the universe. January 2022. This is really where the coding train, we're going to add some cars. We're going to add new, the schedule is going to be more frequent. <laughs> um, so I'm uh, with moving, setting up a new studio. I am teaching at NYU, uh, my, my day job, uh, three courses this semester. I will talk about those because coding train runs parallel with my um, university teaching. Um, I've got a lot of commitments going on in the next few months. My children, though, they're at school right now at this present time. <laughs> they're at school and they don't come home from school till later in the afternoon. So that's op certainly opened up quite a bit of time for me. But I will be on sabbatical this spring, and we'll see. Maybe I've got some. Maybe I'll. I should be doing something else on sabbatical. <laughs> it's kind of unclear. But part of setting up this new studio and, and moving to this new place with this garage, I'm hoping to really make this my uh, everyday workspace. Um, to do a lot more coding train stuff and maybe other creative coding and other projects. I don't know, maybe I could start streaming other kinds of tutorials. I, uh, beard trimming tutorials, coffee pour over tutorials. I'm trying to think, I actually don't know about those things. <laughs> There's really nothing that I'm an expert in, so sorry. Uh, but that's coming. So it's a slow start, awkward start, but I am here. Um, part of today, oh, Chris Sears. How is this even possible? Writes over here in my chat. That's not my chat, but in the Discord uh, member chat. I'm teaching seven courses this semester. That, that blows my mind. I don't even understand how that is humanly possible. You, my friend, are a hero. <laughs> um, school not cool. You don't have a watch yet. I don't, I don't really need... The watch, uh, I see Soren, moderator Soren, thank you mwah, for being a coding train moderator in the chat. Um, so let's see, let me just try this one more time. What's the chance that this has uh, um, come alive? <laughs> no, okay. So I don't have a plan for today. I was kind of thinking, well, let me look at what courses I'm teaching, make a plan. Let me look at some of my older plans. Simon reminded me. <laughs> I'm going to come over to this here for a second, uh, and uh, I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to go here to uh, github.com slash coding train. Is it raining? I hope it doesn't start raining because then poor Gloria is going to get quite wet. Hmm. Uh, coding train, uh, rainbow topics, I think is the name of the repository um, where I kind of, <laughs> so this is the thing, it's so true, oh, so true. Sound is much better than the last time. So that's probably just the lav mic. Uh, uh, this space prefers the lav mic over, uh, have this, um, I have this mic which I really do like. I would, I would certainly recommend it. I don't wanna unplug it, it shouldn't be plugged in. Can you see it? No, where's the camera? Um, it's like a, a Elgato Wave. <clears throat> not, not yet a sponsor, but someday maybe. Um, so uh, Simon really rightfully pointed this out to me that I have this habit of at the beginning of every semester making a new markdown file and kind of I duplicate the previous ones and go through a list of stuff that I want to work on. And uh, apparently I never actually do anything but make the list. 
<laughs> so let's just look at the summer 2021. I won't make a new list today. That's, I guess, I, you know, what is it? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing. Yeah, you can see, like, I don't think I've done any of these things that are on the list. I didn't move <laughs> this summer, and I've been really working hard to try to keep the Nature of Code video tutorials coming out. So I hope you don't all feel like I'm not doing <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing stuff. I'm trying. Um, but um, yeah, I can see, I think like all of these still apply. So absolutely no point in remaking this list. The cabana is no longer a thing. It might return. But I, I do have dreams of making videos in a sort of different style, in a, in a, um, like those cabana videos. Um, uh, yeah, so these are, uh, I haven't done any of these. <laughs> yeah, so great. So all this stuff um, has not, nothing has been, ooh, Discord bot stuff. That, yeah, no, I haven't done any of this. So I have an idea. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Ready, right, everybody? You're going to be amazed. Watch what I'm about to do for you. <clears throat> I'm going to click this edit button. I'm going to type, I don't have access to this project. Hold on. What's going on there? Ah, so I forgot that I made this very silly, I attempted to make a YouTube short. Um, I don't know if anyone actually watched my YouTube short. Um, I got some complaints about like, why are you making a YouTube short? Not, not, not for you, my friend. Um, some people liked it, uh, but I, I made a separate um, GitHub account. Um, so maybe what I need to do is go back to um, my myself sign in I don't know this might be a total fail ooh whoa okay oh all right I'll take it oh no authentication code and guess where my uh, oh I could you know what maybe I could get a code sent to my backup phone number would that help no okay so one issue is Everything is a fail today. Oh my goodness. This doesn't work. All right, but this is good. I'm going to get my authentication code um, and I'll be right back. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to be very far and you're going to hear me the entire time, but I'm just going to put on this sound. I'm going to leave this here. I'm walking to the side. I'm still in a physical space where I'm going over to my phone, which is tethered to the computer using something called Elgato Cam, which totally does not work. Uh, apparently, Authenticator, um, looking for GitHub. Huh? Okay, I gotta memorize this in my head, but not tell you the numbers. And the dial is going down. Oh my god, it's almost gonna run out of time. <laughs> okay. Am I gonna get it in time? Verifying, verifying. Yes! I did it. Now, um,. Coming back here. Now, let me see. Let me see if I, oh yeah, the, the autofocus causes the desk to dance, yeah. By the way, most of this, I just wanna say that most of this live stream is me just trying to like figure out this new studio. But hopefully, as I do this today and get further along, more interesting stuff will happen. <laughs> there is a very dead cicada on the ground here. I am entirely barefoot. I hope you can see that. Uh, I've got some uh, nice rugs here. <laughs> and I'm really afraid of stepping on it. I feel like I should do, like have a, like a, a small little burial for it and say a uh, cicada. Uh, say, I, I mean, okay. <clears throat> Let's see. There's gotta be something here that's appropriate. Uh, let me see. No. I want to say something. <laughs> I want to talk about the cicada over here that is lying on the floor. Cicada, I don't know that I ever met you when you were alive, but I hear your sounds every night as I walk Gloria in the darkness and looking up at the stars, and I, I hope that you... Wait, am I... <laughs> is this really happening right now? <laughs> okay, I'll be right back. What was I doing? Oh, I was going to see if I get that camera to work. Ah, yes, the iPad stand. Mmm. I do have a cat. I, I have four cats. Two are up for adoption. Someone in the chat, Mark Boots said get a cat. 
You're going to be sorry you made that comment in a second. All right, I'm coming right back. All right, here I am. Come on, Epoch Cam. There's no reason why. It worked all morning. And then I wonder if I have to like be in the thing so it's like activated. Maybe I should be a little more patient. Here. I'm going to do this. Like maybe I actually have to leave this here like open for a short bit. Okay, hold on. Uh... All right, everybody. I guess it's really not going to work. Boom, 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 doom, doom, my three dots up and down, they up and down, they never load, they never load, loading the musical Broadway spec open, when will my time be? I will somehow make it on the stage of coding. All right, um, now. <laughs> I, um, <clears throat> I want to talk about cats. Uh, the Brooklyn Cat Cafe is a nonprofit cat cafe in New York City, cat adoption center and social space, uh, all volunteer 501c3 organization. I am currently, my family is currently fostering, uh, where are they? I'm looking for Ruby and Loki. Does anyone see Ruby? Ruby. Ruby and Loki, here we go. I'm gonna, you, you know, especially, you know you wanna adopt these cute, lovely kitties. There's Loki and there's Ruby. Ruby is amazing. Oh my God, the littlest, tiniest creature. Um, and so, um, they're a sweet and relaxed pair of kittens who can't wait to look. He's the most handsome and floofy brown taffy over meat will melt as soon as you pick him up for pets and scratches. He purrs like so loud. Um, <laughs> uh, Ruby is a sweet, curious, tiny jewel of a kitty. Look, I love them very much, but we already have two cats. <laughs> and four cats is a lot. <laughs> so I'm hoping that somebody will be very excited to adopt them. Um, you can, uh, I have nothing to do with the adoption process. I am, my family's just fostering them. Uh, contact the Brooklyn Cat Cafe. I don't know, maybe you, uh, um, and if you're interested, okay, uh, uh, that's not what you're here for, so, but you know, someone did mention uh, cats in the chat. All right, so we've established, oh, we've established that I am a very disorganized person who live streams for enormous amounts of time doing absolutely nothing, and that some amount of people continue to watch. <laughs> I'm, viewership might be going down, but you know, c'est la vie. Um, <laughs> bookmark your cats, yeah. So um, I'm trying to set up a new studio. My goal, a couple things. I've, I've, let's talk about news, coding train news. Coding train breaking news. Toot, toot. Okay, so. It's not really breaking news because it's all stuff that's repeat, but I'm, it's, I'm telling you this will give you a sense of what's to come and it will help me sort of like think about what it is that's happening and that I'm doing. So big project, probably won't launch until the end of this year, early 2022, brand new Coding Train website. Um, one thing, actually, I wonder if I can like quickly put up a poll. Uh, and Ben, uh, what language are you coding in today? <laughs> the language of Babel. Rambling babble. That's the language I'm coding in today. Um, maybe the, the poll is kind of unnecessary here. Uh, what, I wanted to, what I wanted to say, and we can, I'm, I'm going to actually, so first of all, you should join the Discord. Um, where's that button which pastes a link? Because I will be having official polls and, okay, why is uh, iTunes is trying to install itself? Finish? Okay. Um, great. The, the, so you should join the Discord because that right now I'm going to do a uh, sort of like anecdotal poll. <laughs> I'm just going to take your temperature and talk through something that I'm really struggling with. Um, 
And uh, I will soon release this as a Google Form um, in the Discord itself for everybody to vote on to get your feedback on. So one of the things I'm trying to think about with the new website is language. And oh, you don't see the website. This is the old website, the current website. Uh, it's not old, it is actively present and new and wonderful, but we're making some upgrades. Um, you can see here there are various headings like challenges and beginners and learning and more and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So for example, um, what, what is the, what is the uh, best kind of language to use for organizing all of the content on the website? Is it very sort of literal, dry, this is what it is, beginner how to code in P, you know, beginner tutorials, uh, coding challenges, uh, machine learning lessons, I don't know. Or would the website be more fun and approachable and would you be able to navigate and understand what's going on? You know, I want to have a very welcoming and inclusive and kind of playful uh, quality to it. If there were more train theme things, like these are the tracks and these are the train cars and over here in the cafe car you can join the Discord to chat. So this is one of the things I'm struggling with. I'm, I'm, so I'm going to be putting out a survey for all sorts of kinds of naming ideas. Um, yeah, if you are a writer also, you know, I, you know, I think I don't really have anyone at present. Um, I mean, maybe that's not true, but I, I'm also maybe looking for someone to help collaborate on this to sort of think about a style guide for all the language and the descriptions and that kind of thing. So, um, I mean, that maybe that's on me to really work on more. But that's so that's news item number one. New website. It's active. An active project. I will be maybe sharing. Uh, rough versions of it. Doing, we you know already put out and had volunteers to do some preliminary user testing of some of the designs. So your path to getting those sneak peeks and previews is the Discord. Of course, if you join as a member, <laughs> you uh, also you might get some other sneak peeks and previews that I will be sharing as well. So uh, karaoke is in the uh, uh, chat. Hello, nice to see you. Um, Oh yes, and the Discord link actually can be updated to discord.gg slash coding train because we now have a vanity URL because as we all know, I am a very vain person. I mean, it's true. I mean, I, you know, I could be making all these video tutorials without me in them and yet I choose to put me in them every single day of the week. So what are you going to do? It's, it's who I am. It's what I am. Um, I heard a noise. It's... it's it's, it's my dog, it's okay. I, I heard an animal and I got a little bit afraid. I think there are some bears around here. Not probably wandering into the garage in the middle of the day, but um, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Soren, for posting that. Now, um, um, all right, so. That was, I, that's on website, item number one. <laughs> I had some other things in my head when I started this. News. Ah, yeah. So I'm also trying to figure out the right balance between live streaming and um, what you're watching right now and uh, more polished sort of recorded video tutorials and um, that follow certain sequences as well as new coding challenges. Because, you, you know, at my, as many of you are probably aware, my like, ability to produce content has severely slowed down. Uh, I think in some some aspects, the quality has greatly improved. Um, I'm always, and I've been getting very positive feedback about extra diagram and animation elements and, um, you know, quicker editing that lets you watch the videos uh, more quickly, frankly, um, and uh, have um, different visuals that help you step through and understand the concepts. Um, but I don't know to what extent um, um, but I'm trying to figure out, <clears throat> it, it's, it's a tricky balance now. How, uh, you know, I could have, instead of live streaming today, I could have just started recording some more <laughs> coding challenges. But I used to do the coding challenges in live streams, and people really liked that. I don't know, I don't know how to do any of this. I'm lost. And so uh, I think if I make it to January, <laughs> that sounds very um, ominous, but uh, as I plan to make it to January, um, I will have multiple days in the week, so maybe I can start to do all of these things. Um, but um, I think this would be a good time, um, since I have no plan um, and I just thought of it, to...
wrong track. To talk about and show some uh, community contributions. So one of my favorite things and one of the things that I'm really hoping will make its way into the new website, it's very loud for me, um, is, hopefully it's not too loud for you, um, are ways of featuring what viewers of The Coding Train are making um, so that you can share with each other, so that you can share with me, and that everybody can be inspired and, 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 and welcomed into participating. So let's take a look. I honestly have not <laughs> looked at this at all. Let's go to um, this page, and I want to look at some Bezier Curve um, community contributions. I think some new ones have come in. I certainly looked, I feel like I looked at some of these. Maybe I haven't looked at, does anyone remember <laughs> if I looked at any of these in a previous live stream? <laughs> uh, speaking of which though, what is a Bezier Curve? So my new trick that I'm about to try <laughs> and see how this goes. I do have, I really prefer to use a physical whiteboard. I like the ability to gesture, to draw, to move around, to erase, but it's, um, I don't have a second camera where I am right now. I tried setting up my phone and connecting it, and so it's not really working. I need some more lights to try to light the whiteboard area, but also there might be some value in me doing diagrams that can be captured and replayed and stored. So what I have for you today <laughs> uh, is um, I mean, it's, it's an iPad. I have one of these, uh, ooh, it's like invisible, pencils. Um, and I think, and I, this is Procreate, which someone recommended to me. I have no idea how to use it. <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows or you have your favorite drawing app. But what I want to do is kind of t uh, look at and diagram what is a uh, Bezier curve. This is like a very weird... Um, this is a very weird um, like pen thing that I'm on. Sketching, inking, drawing, airbrushing, textures, abstract, charcoals, elements, spray paints, touch-ups, luminance. What do I want? I just want drawing. Um, but I just kind of want like a whiteboard marker. Is that like this? Ooh, no, no, no. Ooh, that's nice though. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and now, hold on. How do I... Can I go to here and just make like a new thing? Do this, all right. Um, and then Procreate is the best. Okay, so that's good. Uh, I use this app, Procreate. Okay, great. So maybe, um, can somebody tell me <laughs> what for just like a very basic pen I should use? Not a painting? Br a painting brush could work. No, like drawing is what I'm doing. But what is just, or am I inking? Maybe I'm inking. Oh yeah, there we go, gel pen, studio pen, marker. Marker is what, but I guess I want something maybe a little smaller. So let's try this gel pen. Oh yeah, this is right. I just wrote my name, that was very exciting. Two fingers touch is for undo. Ooh, look at that, that is cool. Uh, and then this is like probably thickness. Doesn't get very, uh, and so I kind of want it maybe something a little bit thicker. Gel pen, studio pen, marker. Let's try marker again. And then I assume I can uh, pick a color somewhere. Is that like this? No, whoa, what does this do? I have no idea. Um, okay, Bezier curve. So let me just practice what this would be like if I'm doing um, a little uh, lesson. Okay, uh, Bezier, ooh, whoops. I think I made it some weird color. Where's the color? <laughs> Is it this? Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, like what if I just want that? There we go. Okay, uh, Bezier. So I also need a much more stable stand. <laughs> I need a much more stable stand because um, this is moving around a lot as I draw. See, what I don't like about this is I'm looking down over here, which probably doesn't bother you, but as I'm drawing and then I have to turn, I'd much rather be doing this, right? But um, anyway, uh, so a Bezier curve 
is a particular kind of curve that involves interpolation. And as I discuss in my video about Bezier curves, uh, you know, technically a um, we have a quadratic, a cubic, and uh, what was the what's the first one called? I'm completely blanking on this. Um, uh, but you know, this this is a Bezier curve if it just has two con two anchor points. Um, it's just a line between those two points. Um, but a quadratic Bezier curve involves a control point, and that control point, um, as you move it, causes the curve to bend. Linear, that's what I'm, <laughs> of course. I was like, it couldn't possibly be linear, right? That's so obvious. Um, so now, oh, <laughs> it's a lot of undo there. If I were to add a second control point, then, that causes the curve to bend down here and up here, et cetera. So, the, but, so I, by the way, this is me just practicing, trying to explain stuff with diagrams. Yeah. Uh, so, and this is uh, cubic. Smiley face. <laughs> Ooh, I could draw this. Could be like a cat with like some whiskers. <laughs> How's this going, everybody? <laughs> so, uh, my uh, video. Uh, it, where I uh, use an actual whiteboard and show some code examples and talk through everything there is to be on Bezier curves. This is one of the more uh, popular videos that I've recently released, um, at least initially. I, videos have these very strange lives to them. So um, uh, they get a sort of burst of viewership when I first release them, and sometimes that burst of viewership kind of takes off in a pretty strong way. Bezier curve video being quite an, a, a good example of that, but still, um, usually, if it, even if it's doing really well in its sort of initial burst, somewhere between like 50 and 100,000 views, which is tremendous. I'm very thrilled with that. Um, other videos, like the Wander video I recently released, which is I'll, I'll get to next, which is like in the middle of a sequence of many videos, they don't tend to take off with that kind of burst. Whatever YouTube magic is happening, um, it's just not picked up as much. But then, strangely, videos that I have will just, a year later or two years later, <laughs> sometimes like take on this life of their own. And so the example of what's happening right now is A-star. Let me search for like this A-star coding train video. Um, this one is just like consistent, this is from 2017, is consistently the most pop viewed video right now every week, every day on my channel. It might have come down, I haven't actually looked in like maybe like three or four days, but um, this is also pretty interesting that the search for this video is actually, this is, I don't think these are tied to, well maybe, I don't, I don't believe these older videos are time coded. Um, code, the title coding challenge has something to do with that. That's interesting. Yeah, and I, I often think that what I probably should do is have, and I don't want to do this, but like if I were trying to optimize towards the strongest viewership, I would actually just have a channel that's only the coding challenges so that people could subscribe only to that and that YouTube's um, understanding of my content would be like, oh, people like every video. Because <laughs> what happens is I release a coding challenge, it's like recommended more and more, and then I do one that's like, I think really important and part of a sequence, but it doesn't get as much viewership. So then the next coding challenge is like, well, people aren't as interested anymore, so maybe it'll be a little bit less. It's like this never ending cycle. Um, I, I'm trying not to be obsessed with this stuff. Uh, you know, it's, it's really not the primary, my primary sort of incentive or motivation, but it's so hard not to get caught up in it. And I understand that for other people, um, you know, who are doing this YouTube stuff much more full time, um, it, it can be much more of a primary driver and incentive. Okay, snake game, yes. Coding challenge number three, the snake game, most viewed video of mine, at least of all time. Um, all right, so uh, Bezier Curve. <laughs> I wanted to look at community contributions. So let's see, I honestly don't remember if I looked at any of these, but um, so I wanna just look at all of these that are here and encourage you to submit your own. Um, let's look at synth wave um, animation by Chris Sears, who I know is, uh, or at least was previously in the chat. So let's take a look at this and see what happens. Loading, 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 loading. Whoa, ho, ho, whoa. Whoa, I have, I think I saw this, but I definitely didn't look at this on stream because, wow. <clears throat> this is wild. 
So um, now I'm trying to even like understand how this is based off of my sketch. I mean, I guess I see it here. This is my visualization of the uh, quadratic Bezier and with a sort of random motion, but it's now mapped into a 3D space. I feel like I'm like looking at a scene from Tron or something. <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, really cool stuff. Oh, and there's music. I don't hear it. So, um, you know, I'm, I, I would love to, it's probably like the way I have all my audio routing going on. It's probably why the music is not being heard. So apologies for that, but it's probably better for me not to play the music on stream anyway. Uh, but this is quite amazing. Like, this to me is the, uh, it's just like the epitome of why I love doing this. <laughs> because I don't think when I was making my Bezier curve example, I ever would have thought of this uh, visual application. But I think there's so much, um, you know, a, a Bezier wander. This on its own is wonderful. But it, now this is leading me to think of so many different ideas. Yeah, it's a great, like, a, 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 YT Brenkin asks, is that the information superhighway? <laughs> no, but I could imagine this being like a nice visual for, um, you know, some opening credits of, of um, some type of game or, or other type of content. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, turn, click the canvas, turn the tangent lines. Ah! Oh, fascinating. So I, I can't resist how much I love looking at this with the tangent lines and the colors, but this also has a really nice uh, quality to it. Now, the move, one thing that could be really interesting to experiment with, it just occurred to me, um, it looks like this is probably based off of the random motion that's in my example where I'm just showing like, okay, see, you can move the control points around and the curve changes. I, I don't know this to be true. We could look at the code, obviously. But um, I wonder if there were some type of, um, you know, set of rules for the motion. So that, you know, what if it were sine waves or Perlin noise, those are the obvious ones to start with, but so that there's a connection as I'm moving through this space, I'm seeing these rippling motions as each curve passes over me, sort of passing its motion on to the next. Um, so great, great job, um, uh, a, a bell and a train whistle for um, this wonderful community contribution. Uh, closing this one out. And going on to Bezier Curve Road Editor. I remember um, David telling me about this one. So let's take a look. Um, what do I do here? Shift click to add points to the path. So this is using the fact that you can uh, chain the Bezier curves together. So if I go back to, um, I want a really quick way just to make a new page. I guess right now the only way I know how to do this, like there must be like in this, can I have like multiple pages? Ooh, whoa. Oh, I can do cut and paste. Ah! Like can I make a, like how do I make a new, uh, okay, I'm going to have to learn how to use this app later. Right now I'm just going to do this. Um, so one of the things that's really awesome about Bezier curves, I mentioned, right, we have two anchor points and two control points. But um, a Bezier vertex just involves these three points here, right? That makes the entire Bezier vertex, like this is the next point we're going to, but these control points, and I'm sorry, I really misdrew this because the curve doesn't pass through the control points. That's a kind of common misconception, or at least it's a misconception that I make. So, um, oh wait, what did I just do? Did I just change the color to white again? What just happened? All right, I don't know what's going on. I obviously do not know how to use this piece of software. <laughs> I can have layers in Procreate. Okay, so um, what's the Bezier cat? I don't. Was that the thing that I drew? I have no idea what's going on. Anyway, so these are. Oh, I'm doing a terrible job here. These are the elements of the next vertex, which means if I wanted to add another vertex, I only need three more elements, which would cause it to curve like this, and then I could put uh, three more elements. And when I say elements, I mean three more points. So the vertex, the Bezier vertex, is a collection of three vertices. The, and I, I guess this little, um, it's, it's where I am going to. Like if it were just, oh, wait, what just happened? <laughs> um, that was just an extra, right? It's where I'm going to. Like if I didn't have a Bezier vertex, I would just be going to the next vertex. But because I do, 
I'm kind of like curving around. I have no idea what this would actually do at those two control points. So super exciting. So this looks like uh, what um, David has done here. And I believe the idea, if I'm correct, is, ah, yes, look at this, using Bezier curves to create a, dry, like a, a road, essentially. And this would be a perfect complement to what I eventually someday will hopefully actually make. I built a version of this during a live stream a while ago with an idea to make it as a multi-part a uh, set of video tutorials, but I um, want to use ML5, the mach JavaScript machine learning library that I uh, help to uh, maintain, um, to train an AI, in big quotes, to drive along um, this path. So dreams, uh, that's like a great project for the spring, if I can get back to that. Uh, wonderful work. Thank you for this, um, David. All right, moving along. Uh, everyone gets a bell and a train whistle. Now we're going to look at Bezier Curve LERP animations 2 to 10 points by ILM Narayana. Ooh, okay. Gotta love this. So one of the aspects of something that I emphasized in my video tutorial is how the Bezier Curve is... Um, the math behind the Bezier curve is all about linear interpolation. So linear interpolation between just two points is that line. Um, and, um, but once I add that control point, I'm then interpolating the interpolation between the anchor to control and the control to anchor. So you can sort of see this playing out here in this animation. So for example, I think it'll be more obvious if I go to two points, right? There's Oh, I love how this demonstrates the idea so well. This is linear interpolation from one point to another. Let's add one control point. So now this is linear interpolation. See how that's, that one point is interpolating between these two, and the other one is interpolating between the other two, and then between those two, we've got this nice curve. And is this a thing that I can I move these points around? No, but it doesn't matter. This is so wonderful. I, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> now, if I go to four, this is what we're typically seeing as the cubic uh, Bezier, but uh, okay, this is very exciting. This really, this merits a nice drum roll here. <laughs> Let's go to five. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm getting, whew, I'm getting a little warm over here. Oh, that's wild. Oh, that is so amazing. Um, I, I, uh, six. <gasps> ah, this is so cool. All right, I, I think I might be getting a delivery. <laughs> Do you hear that beeping of the truck backing up? Uh, okay. And, and, and Simon in the chat is telling me like Quartic, um, there's Quintic, there's all these different terms. Let's go, let's just jump all the way to 10 because um, I don't know how else to experience this. Amazing. Uh, that is wild. Let's, let's do 10 with random points. Um, yeah, I see a, a delivery truck. Hopefully they're just gonna drop it off and don't need me. Um, wow, this is wild. So I'm distracted by the delivery truck. <laughs> But not to mention this incredible uh, um, variation off of um, the Bezier video. Okay. Thank you for this. It's incredible. Uh, huge round of applause. Can we do that also? All right. Now, moving along. Um, I'm almost to 11.30, which is my halfway point. So recently, the rhythm of these live streams have been um, me babbling for a bit, showing some community contributions, taking a break, and coming back and coding something. I have a couple ideas. Maybe I'll, when I, after I take a break, I'll put a poll up. Um, <laughs> and yes, I know there's a whole live poll system that was engineered by many wonderful, generous contributors to the coding train. <laughs> And I can never seem to figure out how to use, um, which is totally my fault. Um, and uh, But now there's just this poll button in the YouTube chat. I can walk over here and set a poll. Um, all right. I am going to go to Bezier Curve Art by Larry Campfire. 
Let's take a look at this one. Whoa! Okay, I uh, did not know that this was going to be me. So wait, I don't understand this. This is wild. Okay, wait, I have to understand how this is done. So first of all, what picture is that? Gloria? I wish I need a dog cam. So what picture is this? I have no idea. I mean, obviously, it's a picture of me, but I don't remember. It's like, <laughs> is this a picture that's released on the internet somewhere? Probably. Um, so this looks like it is a, uh, what's happening here, if I can understand this correctly, and um, I'm going to attempt to diagram my understanding of this. So there is an image, and it has, an image is a grid of pixels. So each pixel has some brightness value. So imagine a, the image is grayscale and the brightness values are like five. Okay, this is too thick, I guess. 110, I can do this, right? Make it thinner. Um, you know, 255, 100, 0, 10, right? You could imagine this uh, grid of pixels, um, uh, each with a grayscale value. So I think maybe what's going on is then this is visualized, right? So normally you would take the grace, if you're visualizing the data of an image, I would take the grayscale value and I would render it as a block of pixels with that value um, at that spot. <laughs> um, that's what an image is. It's really just a visualization of the data, the color being tied to, well, typically like an RGB value, uh, perhaps with an alpha, but in here, just the grayscale example, a single number, a gray value. But many other things um, can be mapped to um, color to represent the image. And you know, I think a very uh, a well-known um, Example of this is even in the sort of like physical world is Danny Rosen's work. Um, you can see here these like amazing uh, physical uh, sculptures that take, uh, you know, like little blocks of wood and rotate them to reflect light in different ways to create that pixel view. Um, you know, I'm trying to look, I love this one, the like, um, <laughs> it's these, uh, little penguins, fuzzy penguins that like spin around. So if they're facing you from their back, they're dark. Uh, facing you uh, from the front, they're bright. So I really encourage you to check out Danny Rosen's work um, if you're not familiar. Um, look at all these uh, videos that have obviously and, and links that have a tremendous amount more information. So what's happening here I think is something similar. Of course it's still software and screen based though you can imagine doing this with like string or something. But I think what's happening here is like if it is um, a, a bright pixel, maybe just a line is drawn, and then if it's a darker pixel, that line is, if I zoom in, it's bent. So it like um, would, this is hard, I don't really have my, uh, it would kind of like do this, Does it, and that makes it like thicker or something. So I, I'd have to like, try to figure this out, but there's some kind of mapping <laughs> of the grayscale pixel value to the uh, curvature of the Bezier curve itself. I was thinking, is the line getting thicker? No, it's just more pixels are being filled in because the curve has more, uh, the length of the curve, there's more, uh, is, it's longer, there's more space for it to fill. And that, by definition, creates this sort of darker look to it. So that's really wild. I don't know, that just would not have occurred to me <laughs> to do that. So what would be cool, let's just see, I'm just really curious. Um, I wanna take a version of this. Um, let me log in as Coding Train. If you will indulge me for a second. Um, and I don't know if this font is too small, but, um, and again, I just wanna emphasize, this is, um, I am taking a Larry Campfire's example, and I just want to see what it looks like with video. So I'm going to say, I'm going to add video. Let's comment out the image, comment out preload. And I'm going to say, I know, oh, maybe it will take too long uh, to run, but let's, let's, we'll find out. Oh, these are quadratic Beziers. So I was trying to, in my attempt, to think about it as a, a cubic Bezier. Let's say, uh, create video. Actually, let's just leave this as is with both the image. Just um, create video, 
uh, oh, create capture video. So let's make sure this works. So now I should have both this image and you can see, there we are, by the way. So this is what it really looks like in here. It's just a green curtain <laughs> um, with a lot of lights and a much nicer camera than the webcam. Um, but that's what I look like standing here. I, I, one thing that I'm very unsure about, so I need a haircut. I don't always, I don't need to wear a hat in every video, but it's, you can see, this is a mess right now. I'm a mess. <laughs> but uh, lighting wise, I'm just like, I don't know if I have the right temperature, lighting temperature, settings on the camera. Anybody wants to help me with that, I'm, I'm game. But um, okay, so I should be able to um, figure out a way. So this is using scale times image. So let's do this. I'm going to say uh, video equals create capture. And I want to take off the auto refresh and stop it. So I'm going to make the video size. I wanted to make it something that I know. Uh, oh. So it's actually multiplying up. So let's make it like 40, let's make it 40 by 30. And let's just do the scale, scale is eight. I think that'll work. Is that gonna be too slow? I'm gonna take out the no loop. Um, and so image should then, where is it getting the pixel color? Ah, it should be video. Ah, so one thing will be, this is an issue. So it worked just fine because it was only doing it once, but um, using the get function to get the pixel color can be incredibly slow if you're doing it over every single pixel as opposed to just working with the pixel array directly. But let's see what happens. What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? Let me try running this. Let me just comment out image so it'll throw an error if that's being used somewhere else um, and see what happens. Oh, okay, image is not defined, right. So I think what I'm going to do is just hard code in uh, for right now what I know the size to be. Obviously I could pick it up from the video and then I got an error probably because the video isn't ready. Image is not defined. No, there's still another place where I'm using image. Ah, okay. This might throw an error because the video might not be ready. Oh, nope, totally working. You can see it's totally working, it's just running incredibly slow. So is the slowness um, just the Bezier, drawing the Bezier curves themselves, or, I have to stop, or can I get around that slowness by getting rid of that get function? So the way to get rid of that get function I think Gloria might have gotten tangled. Hold on, everybody. <laughs> Pause to help my poor... No, no, she's not tangled. She's not tangled, okay. She's on like a, a leash. Oops, I'm, I'm okay. Um, so what I can do instead is I should be able to say uh, r equals video.pixels, the index plus zero. So this is something I've covered uh, uh, like probably you know, a thousand times, um, but I, since I have this um, whiteboard thing here, I'll do it again. So let's just say these are my pixels. They have row, uh, column numbers, zero, one, two, row numbers, zero, one, two, but the actual pixel number is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I need to get the index four, for example, I can actually just say, what is its x value, which is one, plus what is its row, or y value, which is also one, times the width, which is three. So in this case, you can see that makes sense because one plus three is four, one plus three is four, four plus three is seven. So I'm gonna add that formula into this code here, saying index equals x plus y times times video.width. Now here's the catch. So while this is true, this diagram that I've done is absolutely true, um, there's actually four values in the array in each one of these spots. And I, I did that wrong because there's R, wait, what? Why does it sometimes just change to white? What am I doing? Am I like triggering an eraser? I am. I switched the eraser, I see. Um, there's an R, a G, a B, and an alpha. 
So red, green, blue, and alpha. So um, what I actually have to do is take that index, which is which pixel am I on, and multiply it by four, because I've got to advance four every four spots. Can you hear Gloria barking, by the way? Does that should come in through the mic? Um, I wonder if I can just, I have not tried a streaming. I've worked in here, but usually she'll, she'll come or I'll go and check on her. But um, So this should give me the red, green, and blue values instead of using get by going directly into the array. And then I could, should just be able to replace them here with R. This is a very fancy way. I'm always so lazy. And I just get the <laughs> grayscale value by uh, adding them up and dividing it by three, <laughs> the average of the R, G, and B. But this looks like, I guess this is probably using like luminosity or something. It's using a larger percentage of the red value. Um, wait, what? Times R times, yeah. 21%, um, no, no, of the green value. 21% of the red value, 72% of the green value, and 7% of the B. Let's see if this uh, improves anything. I messed something up. What did I do wrong? I mean, I thought I didn't have to do this. Do I need to call load pixels? I think I do. I think I have to call load pixels. I don't know why I thought I didn't need to do that. Oh yeah, look at that. So see how much that improved the speed? So now we're able to do this in real time. Ooh, I love this. Lovely, look at this, it's so cool. Now I think what I could do is make the scale, let's see, how could I do 80 by 60 or is that gonna be much too slow? Let's give it a try. Um, Just do this to be a little bit more thoughtful about it. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Let's just see if this works. This might be too slow from a drawing standpoint. Yeah, you can see now this is too slow from a drawing standpoint, but it's actually kind of nicer with it. And I think what I might like to do is even lower it and then just make this scale um, like 32. Uh, let's try. That's probably too extreme. Let's try 16. Um, let's try 24. And I guess I guess 40 by 30 was a little bit nicer. Um, where is there a stroke weight somewhere? Begin shape, no fill, stroke weight. I'm just curious to like bump up the stroke weight a little bit. And let's uh, hit stop and let's try looking at this um, in uh, full screen mode. I know I'm taking quite a bit of time here. Huh, what happened there? Cool, kind of slow, but still pretty wild. All right. Uh, thank you, Simon. I'm like looking for my watch. All right, uh, it is now uh, officially the midpoint of today's uh, stream. I do have a pretty much, I really do need to stop by like 12.30. Um, I, I hope that this is, um, that you are enjoying today so far. Let's uh, thank you uh, so much to, ah. Um, to uh, Larry Campfire for that. Let's go to oh, Quartic Bezier Curve. <laughs> Exciting by Codefish. And I apologize that I'm gonna end up, you know, kind of looking at some of these more quickly. Um, but this is Quartic, right? Because it has three control points. Mm, great work working that out. Wonderful job, Codefish. Uh, you responded perfectly to the prompt in my video and I am so happy. Uh, let us go now to Animated and Control Point Bezier Curve by Alex Hunter. And what do I do here? I click. Oh, wild. 
So I can just keep adding points? And then I can speed it up. Whoa! Oh, that is wild. Oh, amazing. So this is very much like what we saw before, but now I have the ability to um, reset um, to just actually just make my own points. Like if I go in a circle, what happens? And then uh, also play around with the speed. So have it run very, very slowly or very, very quickly. Amazing job. This is all great. Woo! A lot of breath from that. Uh, now we are going to moving on an infinite loop made with Bezier curves. I might regret this, but I'm kind of excited just by the title of that. Here we go. There's a fly. <laughs> hmm. Error? Not sure what happened. You know, the, this full screen thing sometimes does mess things up. I've noticed recently. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> awesome. Oh, so it's like the infinity symbol somehow made with Bezier curves. And I love this little dot. Look how it's like. Whoop. I'm going to do sound effects for this. Somehow the speed at which is going, is this an illusion? It's actually always moving at the same speed? or No, I believe it's slowing down. It's probably following the actual interpolation. Wow. So let's take a look here. Um, I, I, oh, I see, I see. Oh, it's using the vehicle? Oh, amazing. Somehow this is using something from nature of code. Oh, no. The vehicle, yeah. It's got like a vehicle in it somehow, which is a great segue <laughs> because the, I don't know that anyone has made a community contribution for this yet because the video was just released yesterday. But if you haven't watched my most recent uh, video release on the coding train, it is um, part of the Nature of Code series. Um, all the way down here, we have, uh, I'm, you know, I'm on this quest, as I mentioned in the video, to implement every single um, uh, Craig Reynolds steering behaviors. Uh, I'm curious what people, if people like these kind of goofy thumbnails that sort of like show little, uh, uh, the, this triangle character kind of acting out. But this particular wander behavior, um, we can see here, yes, look at this. It seems like there haven't been made any variations based on this lesson. See, that's a very awkward sentence. I probably wrote that sentence at one point, but this is what I need. I need to re really work on rewriting the language for the website. And is the community contribution a community contribution, or is it like a passenger's ticket? No, that doesn't make sense. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. But yes, there are no community contributions yet, yet, uh, yet. but you could be the first one. You could submit it today. I will be looking at them this afternoon on my own, and I could come back and show them in a future live stream. Um, if you want help figuring out how to do that, I would definitely join the Discord, which I just posted a link in the chat. But let's take a look at just at the various examples. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show you that I made for this video, which wasn't part of the actual um, coding itself, and why is this so... Did I zoom in on this or something? Yes, there we go. Um, let me see, can I drag this over? Um, I kind of tried to do this in 3D. So I was, one of the things I was really pleased about um, is, and so what is, what is going on here? Um, basically, um, the wander algorithm involves a vehicle and it needs to decide which way should it steer. And the way that it decides is it projects a point out in front of it uh, creates a circle at that point's location, then projects a point out onto uh, the edge of that circle, and then steers in that direction. Then this point moves randomly over time. Um, and so what the, the result there is instead of just like making a lot of random motions, sure that point might be moving randomly over time, but it's not going to cause the vehicle itself to make a drastic change in direction until maybe it gets all the way back down like over here, over here. So it's a very effective way. Uh, no, no, this is not where I'm swiping. Ah, 
Uh, this is where I'm swiping. Um, so this is like I was trying to do this in 3D. Uh, I think I might need, everybody, just prepare yourself. <laughs> I'm going to say something. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit scary. <laughs> I'm going to try to stay standing here and not go anywhere. Uh, I might need quaternions um, to really figure out how to get my vehicle pointing in the right direction. But um, anyway, if, I, I was curious if somebody has a better take on how to do this in 3D and visualize it. I would love a contribution in that. Uh, um, vein. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else here. Um, I think this is kind of maybe a useful one to just for me to show you. Um, you know, think about how, so this is the actual algorithm, uh, wander algorithm playing out. Um, and one of the things that I did with this is that I just attached some sliders so we could sort of see like how does it look if that circle becomes closer um, or if that circle is much bigger. Um, as well as, I don't know what this one is, oh, the dis amount of displacement is like bigger. So this is a much more like actively changing direction wander versus if I were to put all these sliders down, I would assume that with everything low, um, it's going to kind of move in the same, and it's, when I say move in the same direction, it's not actually resolving to moving straight. It's continuing to turn the same way for a while and then turn another way. So uh, there's a lot of, um, possibilities for this. I hope that you get a chance to explore this particular video tutorial and submit your community contributions so they could show up here. I would love that so much. <sighs> How's everybody doing? How is this stream so far? Um, on a scale... <laughs> uh, uh, how is this, is this stream on a scale of one? to five. <laughs> oh, I can only get four. I guess, so four is, um, <laughs> four would be you really, this is the best stream I've ever seen, and one would be like, eh, you know, eh, eh. I've liked previous streams that I've watched quite a bit more. I don't know why I'm asking this. This is a very dangerous thing that I've done, like self-indulgent thing that I've done. Um, so, but I would like a lot of feedback because I'm trying to figure out, like, what am I really doing here? Um, again, my I think the way that I think of the universe of coding train content, individual project videos, coding challenges, tracks. I'm calling them tracks, which are more like courses, beginner beginner lessons. Um, and you can see those if you're if you are a beginner. Um, these are the ones where that you can start with on the website, um, as well as some other tracks that are more themed around machine learning or physics simulation. I am working hard to try to um, record these and release them with good production value, <laughs> and then also live streaming once a week, which is me just interacting with the community, answering questions, showing community contributions, and what I'm doing today. And then always programming something uh, kind of new, which is what I'm gonna do in the second half, even though I have no idea what I'm gonna do yet. <laughs> so that's kinda, I, I would love to hear about, like I'm trying to really be more sort of thoughtful and organized about how all the stuff is going. <laughs> I did not eat a very big breakfast this morning. I'm starting to feel the, feel the, um, uh, it's starting to punish me here a little bit as I cannot form words. All right, so um, before I take a break, it is time for me to mention to you um, Sponsor Brilliant. So um, if you like learning, <laughs> and if you like learning from really well done, exciting and interesting uh, resources that you can find on the internet, um, like the coding train, hopefully, you are really going to like Brilliant. And I think Brilliant, the reason why I'm so pleased to have Brilliant as a sponsor is it is a really wonderful complement to what I do. So here's what I'm doing, talking at you, blah, 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 attempting to draw diagrams, blah, 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 trying to write some code here and there. But if you would prefer to be a little bit more self-paced, to have some quiet time on your own, whether on your computer or through an app. Uh, Brilliant has both of those for lots of interactive lessons. So a couple of the courses, do they have da daily challenges? I should go to the Brilliant website, which I will do. Um, they have uh, daily challenges and they have a whole set of courses. Like if I just click on this page, it's like everything that I love is all here. <laughs> Geometry, neural networks, statistics, logic, computer science fundamentals, um, 
And one of the things that I really love about it, and I'm going to go here to the um, like the al uh, the out one of the algorithm algorithm fundamentals course I believe this is um, is that the lessons not only are oh let me read through this material <laughs> and see what's there are actually allowing you to interact and so if you want to learn more about coding you can see like figuring out pseudocode and logic checking your answers stepping through these interactive lessons that's really a wonderful thing to do um, ah yes this is um, this is the course that I'm really excited about here um, and what you um, like that so many of the courses involve these really fun visual dynamic puzzles um, really to teach a particular concept like if you if you maybe you know the formula for the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus B squared equals C squared but you don't really know it until you've gone through all of these different lessons where you get to move shapes around I actually found it quite difficult um, but it really helped me sort of think about fractals and infinity in a wonderful way let's go to the next problem um, so it just still um, so this uh, it, this this particular element of the course is talking about uh, infinite areas and how to do sort of infinite tiling and then how do you consider the total area of what you've tiled. Um, so I'm gonna just step through this. So what, oh, I did this one already too. I'm, I'm further ahead. I did this one. Oh yeah, I remember doing these. Uh, here we go. Oh no. What fraction of the largest circle is shaded orange. Okay, let me put up another poll. Um, nobody's hating this stream so far. Ah, a couple of you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put up another poll. So um, these are going to be, how do I add a new poll? Uh, can, I, can I end this poll? End poll, okay. Now it should let me do a new poll. Come on, YouTube, refresh the page. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do a poll. Yeah, there we go. So infinite areas. I'm gonna let everybody sort of think about this problem. And I'm gonna call them from top to bottom. Oh, actually, you know what, I just put the answer in. One half, two thirds, three quarters. This is a fun thing to do. And four fifths. So I'm gonna ask everybody in the chat and I'm gonna start to think about it now as I uh, go through this. Now, I don't know where I see the result. There we go, now I see the results of the poll. Okay, so all the circles in the pattern have the same center. Each radius is half the length of the previous circle. Um, I wonder if having a little thing that I can diagram will help. Um, I really need to eat some lunch to be able to think this through. Right now, three quarters is winning out, it looks like. So a lot of people voted for four fifths, though. Let's see who's right. All, the cir all circles in the pattern have the same center. Each radius is half the length. So what basically, if I come over here, um, what fraction of the largest circle is shaded orange? So in other words, uh, oops. Right, if this is a circle of radius r, the area is pi r squared. So then if I were to take that radius and divide it by two, half, the area of this interior one is now pi r divided by two squared, which is pi r squared divided by four. So this area, is three-fourths, right? That area is three-fourths of the whole thing. So it can't be three-fourths because we're gonna get more stuff as we continue to go. Like we're adding up all the orange. Which fraction of the largest circle? So it's gotta be four-fifths. I think it has to be four-fifths, which interestingly enough now is gaining its momentum in the poll. But like I, uh, you know, if I look back at all the explanations, there's a very precise way to provably know that it's four fifths. But I'm just going to use my intuition to say four fifths, and I got it right. Yes. Um, wow, that, this is like one of the most fun times I've ever had doing one of these. Um, so, and um, we can see now that four fifths has in the poll taken over, 
and is, uh, is now winning, uh, way up now. Um, so you, that, there's a nice little trick there. Like it does make, so you do sort of see how you can get tricked in thinking that it would be three-fourths based on how I worked out that math, but four-fifths is the answer. And one of the things that I really like about uh, Brilliant as well is that if you go to um, the explanations, you will often, you will see typically like a really excellent uh, summary of how it is um, that, the, uh, you, that have come to the correct answer. So um, I want to encourage everybody there's, um, to sign up for free. You can sign up for free right now when I take a break. It would, uh, um, you know, it helps out the coding train, brilliant.org slash coding train. Um, again, if you want to unlock all of their premium content and courses, um, then you, uh, you would receive a, uh, the first 200 people to do so, would receive a 20% discount off of that. I will also note up here, you can't see it. I'm going to move the banner. The last thing I would like to say to you is that um, it's a really wonderful gift. So maybe you know somebody who loves math and puzzles and science and learning, and um, you don't, you're not as interested in doing it yourself or you already have it. Um, gifting premium is a wonderful thing you can do, and it'll work to do that as well through um, um, whatever this URL is, uh, brilliant.org slash coding train. Okay. Um, oh, did the stream crash? Ugh. I wonder how much was, hopefully not too much was lost. That's a, you know, perfect timing. I mean, uh, that's uh, me being sarcastic there if you weren't sure. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take a break. Um, the perfect thing to do is sign up during the break, and I will be back in um, hopefully less than five minutes because I don't have a tremendous amount of time left. And what do you think I should code? Uh, whatever, if you have some ideas of something I should look at, I mean, I was kind of, there's two ideas that I'm working with. Um, there was a recent, um, was it, Oh, there's, there's a bunch of suggestions that came in through the Discord. I'm already forgetting what they are. There was the um, mat, um, number file video, maybe. And then there was something else. And then I really do want to continue the steering behaviors because I, I need to figure them all out to, and then make videos about them. So that actually is kind of probably what I should do. Um, although ultimately this fall, um, I'm going to be focusing on machine learning and text programming because those are the topics of my courses. Okay, taking my break, uh, sign up for Brilliant and see you in just a few minutes. Thank you.
Hi everybody, the stream seems to be crashing, so I think I'm back. Um, so apologies for that. <laughs> Hopefully it will continue to work. Um, just another 30 seconds here. having some technical issues with the internet today. Um, all right, the radish pie. Um, so the, so the, um, there's been some good suggestions of things that sponsor of today's coding train. Um, it will be, so, Idea number one is um, I do want to look at, I want to do all of these uh, steering behaviors. <laughs> so if you love steering behaviors. Uh, so containment is the next one on my, on my list to figure out. So what I would be doing during the live stream is kind of working through it to see if I can get the basic algorithm going. And then I would later record a separate video all about it. So that's option number one. Uh, a really wonderful um, suggestion that came in from David, although I'm a little, oof. Reconnection successful. I don't know. You know, I could just reboot the router, <laughs> um, which might be a thing that I need to do. Um, but given that I have so little time left, so this would be a great one hey, to do. Brady, I am Matt. Um, but I um, and look, uh, you know, you could also support number file. Uh, with Brilliant, but um, and by the way, if you're not already uh, following. Um, on Twitter, uh, Matt Henderson, you definitely should be because these visualizations are all just white. I, I mean, like in another life, I would love to be able to make stuff as brilliant as this. Um, whoa, what is going on here? Anyway, so, um, so doing my own version of this particular, um, um, this particular visualization, there's a really great one with chaotic bouncing balls as well. That's an option. Of course, I'm, I'm talk, taking so much time talking about the options that I won't necessarily have time for any of them. And then the, the other one is uh, the website 538 uh, Radish. I don't know if, well, if I can find this very easily. Can you bake the radish pie? Oh! The boiler went on. I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner than later. Makes a loud noise. I don't know how 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 bothersome that is for you. Um, would be to <laughs> the next got louder. Um, would be to look through this Riddler problem. Can you bake the radish pie related to math, logic, and probability? I assume I don't know if there's a good visual P5 element to this. Um, so maybe this doesn't really fit. So I'm kind of leaning towards just going <laughs> the safe option, which would be to work on containment. Um, and uh, YQN is saying number file is my fave channel for coding inspiration, which is absolutely true. But why not? Uh, 30 minute start of, so steering, containment. Uh, the other option I said was um, uh, Venus Rose, if that's the right name for it. And then the third option is this Riddler. And then do not follow what people actually voted on. Also, <laughs> doesn't feel, seem like the internet is working. So this is all kind of a bit of uh, a bit of a mess. I, I'm like, I've got a little bit of a headache. I'm feeling a little lightheaded because I really did not eat anything this morning. My wife likes to text me when I'm like busy teaching, like remember to eat today because I really do just completely forget to go eat lunch and busy. And then at some point later in the afternoon, I'm like <gasps> dying. And that's sort of what's happening to me now. But I'm going to eat. I have time to eat lunch at 1230 before the rest of my afternoon meetings. Um, but let's come back here um, and see 
Uh, steering looks like it is winning this right now, which I'm pleased to see. I might have put my thumb on the scale a little bit too much. Um, I'll give it another minute or two here. Um, I'm looking at the various chats. I mean, containment would be the thing that would be best for me to like make forward progress on my life's work of redoing, of, of, of implementing these steering behaviors. So, but I can see it's, and, and it is, um, you know, it's a little bit unfair because if you add up Venus Road and Rose and Riddler, there's more votes than just containment, although containment just got a huge burst all of a sudden. So I'm gonna take this as a gospel and let's go and start to actually work on the containment steering behavior. So uh, Simon, who is, um, um, oh, and I need to go back to the, oh, I'm not in the live chat uh, channel anymore. Um, now I'm back. Look at the classic, not the express. That must have been related to the um, radish pie. I don't know. But I think I'm going with containment based on the votes of the poll. Um, and four have a starting point for me. I would love to hear it. Um, um, how do you all feel? I think what I'm going to look, I've got 25 minutes. It's probably going to take <coughs> two or three minutes to reboot the router. But the stream keeps crashing. And the only thing I can think to do other than restart the computer would be to reboot the router. Could, uh, restarting the computer feels much more um, of an extreme thing because I've got everything set up the way that I've got things going. I'm, I, by the way, I've purchased a new streaming computer because I do, currently this one does not have... The camera just went off? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm gonna reboot the router. The camera's off, I'll, I'll work on that. So the stream is 100% gonna go down. <laughs> but it will come back up. Say something. Hello. I'm waiting to see a message from somebody confirming that you can hear and see me. Oh, wow. There's no, everybody left. Wow. Rebooting the router is definitely, did that end the stream? Hopefully not. Let me see if I can pull it up. Oh, wow, there's no, everybody oh. left. Oh, no, I'm back. Rebooting the router is def. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, maybe people are coming back now. People are coming back. <gasps> Watch that number go up. Okay, uh, there we go. <clears throat> All right, maybe people are coming back. Maybe they actually didn't leave, but everything got disconnected. Um, all right, so here I am back. Oh, Eric is in the chat. I think I just saw Eric. Why is this not showing up? And I totally forgot. Um, hi, Eric. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining today. Um, actually, let me just, if you'll indulge me for a second, I want to just make a really quick plug of Eric's um, GoFundMe. Um, if somebody could um, paste it into the chat, one of the mods, could paste a link. I think you'll find it. It was recently on my Twitter. So Eric is a dedicated viewer of the coding train. I mean, I don't want to, maybe you're not so dedicated. You don't have to be dedicated, but I feel like you're dedicated. You have corresponded with for uh, many years. Um, I had a bicycle accident. I think I met Eric first when I had a bicycle accident and I broke my elbow and my wrist and I couldn't use either of my arms to type. And I experimented with, um, trying to use voice control. I didn't get so far. It was a, just a big learning curve. And by the time I had learned how to do some things, I was gaining use back and also just took a break. So, but um, Eric is disabled and works with his computer entirely through voice control. That's really amazing and needs a new computer. So I hope the Coding Train community could support um, Eric in helping him get um, a new computer. So I don't know if that got posted yet into the chat. I haven't seen it. I will um, pull it up myself. Um, just going to go to twitter.com slash shiftman, which is where you can find the link. And there you go. So uh, find this um, GoFundMe link. And if you're able to support, please do. Okay, now containment. We're not going to get super far with this, but I'm excited to at least get it started. 
Um, it will lead me to the next videos that are coming out that have already been recorded are uh, path following. So if you're following along with my steering behavior obsession, um, I have, let's just look at these, examples implemented of seek and flee, pursue and evade, which I messed up. So I think I need to record, I'm going to make a little note here, uh, pursue and evade correction. So that's a video I need to make. Um, if you're wondering, I'm, I'm look, writing this stuff down here. Uh, wander is done, arrival is done, obstacle avoidance is one, um, obstacles, containment, uh, wall following. So path following is done. Flow field following I have an example of, but I don't know that I've ever explicitly made a video just about it other than some really old ones. Um, so then a crowd path following, leader following, unaligned. So I'm not going to worry about these group ones but because I want to get through all of the simple behaviors first. So it looks like I need to, the videos that I need to make are on pursue and evade the correction, um, obstacle avoidance, containment, and wall following. And I believe that I have heard from my, and by the way, it hasn't crashed again, right? From my, uh, another dedicated viewer of the coding train, Simon, that, um, that uh, containment would be a good one for me to start with. So let's go to it. Uh, I, um, I didn't do any random numbers today. And how come I lost the page that had containment on it? Oh, here it is. So this is a little confusing to me because it is lumping it together in the paper with wall following. But um, I'm just creating a new page. Um, but. Um, I think I could be able to parse this. Okay, variations on path following. Okay, it's a variation on path following. That's good. Um, obstacle avoidance is uh, definitely the hardest of the three, says Simon. Uh, wall following means to approach a wall or other surface or path. What if, by the way, what if instead of making this full screen, I kind of put this up in the corner here, so if I start trying to diagram stuff while I'm reading this, um, you'll be able to see both. Okay, let's try this, see how this goes. Um, wall following means to approach a wall or other surface or path, and then to maintain a certain offset from it. Okay. Containment refers to the motion which is restricted to remain within a certain region. Okay, so uh, just thinking about this, um, let's start with like the simplest possible case. I have a 2D canvas, I have a vehicle, and its job is to never, is to stay within the canvas. So that's containment. Okay, and I, I've made my own version of this in a weird sort of way, I think, in the Nature of Code book. I talk about having a steering behavior or a force that just emanates from the edges, but that's probably, my implementation is probably overly simplistic or different than here. Fish swimming in an aquarium, hockey players skating within an ice rink. To implement, first predict a character's future location. Great. So that's something I can always do, right? Look at the current velocity and predict its future location. Okay? This is actually working quite well, having the diagram like this. I kind of like this. Um, if it is inside the allowed region, no corrective steering is necessary. Otherwise, we steer toward the allowed region. This can be accomplished by using seek with an inside point. Oh, wow, this is starting to sound easier than I thought it might be. <laughs> so, um, so let's, let's, I don't even need to read any further. Obviously, there's more to do, but let's create a basic example. Um, so I think what I want to do, and unfortunately, I have the problem with my little method here is I have very little screen space um, for coding. But let's open up. Um, steering, um, and these are my corrections. Let's look at, I'm trying to remember what this is, pursue, wander. Um, let's look at, I think this, um, let's look at, I'm trying to remember where I first do a future location. Well, Wander does that. Let's just go to Wander. I'm so silly. Um, 
So I'm going to go to wander, the very basic wander. Okay, so and I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to call this containment. Okay, I'm going to give myself very, much more space for the code. Uh, I'm going to move this back over here, and so the diagram stuff is going to be pretty small. Um, let's go to the sketch. Let's make this just like 300 by 200. There we go. Okay. And I, one thing I want to do right now, as interesting as it is, is let me take out this history thing. Because it is not as um, relevant here. Okay. And whoops. So now let's also take out this. So I'm just trying to simplify wander for a moment, and I need to write a new function called containment. So it probably would make sense for this function to be something like, um, you know, to receive like a region that you're being contained in. But I'm going to make a, a, again a lot of over a simplistic. I'm going to simplify the possible scenario space by just considering that the actual canvas is the region. So the first thing that I need to do is get a prediction, which I can do by, and I'm kind of doing what I've done in other. So this would make sense, like predicting the future location probably would make sense to break that out into a separate function entirely, because it's a repetitive task that's happening in multiple steering behaviors. But for the sake of argument right now, I'm going to keep it right here. I'm going to say, um, let's look at um, its future location, like uh, let's say like a 30 frames from now. And let's add that to this position, the position and uh, draw a red dot. And sometimes I like just using stroke, which is sort of silly, but, uh, and then say uh, point at this stop, uh, prediction x and this prediction y. Okay, so all I'm doing so far is that I've got the vehicle, I look at its velocity, I make a, a longer version of the velocity, and then I add that to the position, right? That's the position, and I get this future location, and I draw it red. So hopefully, if I run this, cannot read property of undefined. Where, where is this push happening? Ah, okay, let's take this out. Um, and uh, also, instead of wander, let's call containment. Uh, cannot read property undefined of X. Where? Tell me where. Vehicle JS line 35. I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Good job. No? Prediction equals this dot velocity dot copy. Add this position. Oh, it's, I put this prediction. Ah! This is taking me much too long to find this clip. Oh, I can't even find it. There we go. Um, okay, let's see what we got now. There we go. Okay, great. So we see I'm predicting the future location. And let's predict it 100 uh, frames ahead, which is just, and now basically what's the next step in containment? If it is inside the allowed region, no corrective steering is necessary. So I need to know, is it inside the, um, <laughs> I still keep looking at my watch, 10 minutes left and I'm really, really, Struggling for energy and brain power here. Any suggestions for what I have for lunch today? A nice salad with some beans, maybe? 
So this is going to be to be continued. But So one thing that I probably would want to build for myself is generic functions to determine if uh, some particular spot is inside uh, some particular region. And I believe that I've maybe done this with looking at like is a point inside a polygon. Maybe I only did it in uh, convex or concave or whatever. Thank you, Marvel Man. Um, but um, uh, I think so. Let's 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 do this in a, a sort of let's build the tools to be sort of more generic, but um, keep it sort of simple. So I'm going to write a function just called contains and uh, a vector. So I need like a region. So I, I want a generic function. And oh, the camera went off again. I think it's overheating is what's going on because it's fully charged. Wow. So uh, YouTube, mem um, YouTube members or anyone, when I announce on Friday morning that I'm going to be live streaming like a couple hours from now, your response should be, did you eat breakfast? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Simon's telling me that the diagram really explains this well, which I can see that it does. Ah, uh, yeah. So like, we can see this. Like, look at this. Ah, oh, this is great. Thank you, Simon. So we can sort of see what's going on here, right? I've got this one. If the point is outside the region, um, somehow project a point back in, and that's the steering target. Do nothing here. Do nothing here. Here, this is outside, project this. So I don't know exactly how to project this point. Looks like it's doing it as like a normal, somehow to the sort of path of the wall. Um, yeah, I need to get a, um, Red Fro Bro is telling me to get a fan on it. That's definitely what I need to do. Um, it's quite warm. I mean, it won't be an issue once it's cooler weather, um, but I, I'm like, there's no air conditioning in here. I'm in a garage. It's kind of like half an outdoor space, which I'm a little bit worried about having all this equipment in. If anybody has suggestions for how to appropriately keep, like, do I need like dehumidifiers? Is that the thing that I should be getting for this um, garage space? Um, I know I'm. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, let's uh, let's write this function, um, but I'm going to comment this out and just say it is now contains. So eventually, I want to figure out how to define the region and um, figure out if the vector is within that region. But I'm going to treat this in a very simple way by just saying, as long as v dot x is less than width. Uh, oh, and I should actually just do return. So I'm going to return v dot x is less than width and v dot x is greater than 0. and v dot y is uh, less than height, and v dot y is greater than zero. And I'm going to change this to, uh, I should probably do this. No, no, that's fine. This works. Because um, it's just the point. OK. So uh, let's take a look. Oh, it, wow. It, when I auto formatted it, put it all in one line. Um, so now I should be able to say um, here, if contains prediction, and let's do, um, I was going to change the color of the dot, but as soon as the dot is out,
Okay, my audio should be back. Unfortunately, now I'm using this mic, which is maybe a good mic for podcasting if I'm talking really close up to it in a very, very deep-voiced kind of way. But I know it's going to be really echoey and the audio won't be as good. But um, as I have approximately two minutes left, so much technical fail today. Um, so, and, and I'm, I'm kind of losing steam. So I, I'm not, I didn't, this wasn't my best, uh, stream, but pretty good for ha not having streamed for a while from being in a brand new location with new equipment. Uh, obviously it would have made sense if I could have done several practice streams before I came and did today, but welcome to today's practice stream <laughs> sponsored by, uh, brilliant. Um, I'm going to wrap things up. Uh, the audio is better. <laughs> this is better audio. That seems crazy to me, but maybe it is. Um, uh, it, it it will suffer from me like walking over here because now I'm like moved away from it. Or if I turn and talk in this direction versus turn and talk in this direction. But um, um, anyway, so I, I think I've got to wrap this up. I have to just. Uh, uh, I was gonna say quit while I'm ahead, but I'm way behind. <laughs> So quit before I fall further behind. I'm going to read an explanation. Um, it's a reflection. Like, do you see the blue segment is the, le yeah. So, so the next step here that I would need to do, um, and I think I can make this bigger, is that basically if, um, if what I see is that the future location is here, what I want to do is create a reflection I'm just looking at this, um, which would go, I guess, like this. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Which would reflect back. So whatever this distance is, this is a distance D. Ah, I look for the distance. So I'm going to be doing some kind of normal point finding, just like I did in path following. Great. So the tools of path following will apply. So I did, I forgot, I did this in path following. Uh, the last mic was better. Okay, I'm hearing. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Stig. Um, you're having dinner. I haven't even had, uh, I had like literally like I had like of some blueberries this morning. <laughs> That's all I had as I was getting my kids ready for school. Uh, so like kids at school, I don't have to worry about their like waiting for me to do something, but I apparently I forgot to feed myself. Um, I, I had coffee, uh, not enough, not enough sustenance to stream for two hours. So I'm going to do, so this is in the path following videos, which will be coming out as soon as I can get to reviewing and making the additional content for them, do exactly this. They take a given point, project it onto some um, line segment. Uh, this is scalar projection is what I'm doing, or vector projection. Then whatever that distance is, continue that normal out, that same distance, and then this is the target to which I will seek. So I now understand... <laughs> Uh, I now understand that what I need to do. So at a minimum, this live stream was very useful for me. I don't know. Uh, it, it's harder for you maybe if you're new to things here to process this because I haven't released the path following examples yet. But uh, Simon's been saying this to me probably for like six months and I can see now that he's absolutely right. This containment will follow very well from... Um, will follow really nicely from the path following content. So I'll be able to, so I will be back. So I'm really, um, with the exception of what I will be October 22nd for sure, um, I will be live streaming every Friday at this time. I'm One thing I'm really hoping to do is establish a regular schedule. I might like to do a poll in, um, I might like to do a poll in the Discord about what like, time on Friday is best for everybody because I do have the flexibility to stream like earlier in the morning or a little later in the afternoon that I'm Eastern time, New York, I'm, you know, on the East coast of the United States. Um, so that, uh, I don't know if the mods want to uh, help me remember this. I do want to put out these polls about the new website stuff. So that's first. So join the discord is another plug. Please join the discord. Um, if you want to help engage with some of these surveys that we'll be putting out. Um, but I'm kind of curious to think about what time on Friday might be best for the kind of global international audience um, that there is. Um, all right. Um, yeah, so Will, William asks, what reference material are you using? So in, in case this is um, new to you, here's where you want to look. 
Um, so first of all, all of this is coming from this paper, 1991 paper, Steering Behaviors for Autonomous Characters. It's something that I'm working on, working through. I mean, I've been working through this stuff since you know, 2008, <laughs> or probably even before that. Um, a, a big source of inspiration for this also is um, Casey Reese's work, uh, artworks, and look at his process comp compendium, which is a nice um, 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 this this particular set of um, videos about Casey Reese's work is highly relevant in Breitenberg vehicles. But um, if you go to Coding Train uh, YouTube channel, it should be here under Nature of Code Two. If I start to scroll through these, at once I get to oh, well, let me just go to here. Once I get to um, chapter five. Uh, chapter five are all of is what I'm working on. Uh, the camera went off again. This is so sad. I'm just gonna. I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna let it cool down for a minute. So sorry. <laughs> um, so um, the the this the five point X series is me attempting to make a video about every one of these steering behaviors. Um, and so uh, you know, if steering behaviors is new to you, start with five point one. Um, but if a lot of this stuff about coding with vectors and motion is new to you, then honestly, I would start with 1.1 uh, or even some of these other intro um, videos. They don't necessarily, um, um, it's not as exact sequence, but 1.1 is where I would start. Um, yeah. So uh, sorry for all the technical difficulties here, the camera shutting off, the internet going in and out. Seems like rebooting the router really did fix that. So maybe that's something I should just do every time before I stream. Uh, the mic, I have rechargeable batteries that I recharged for the lav mic all the way up to 100%. And I'm walking away from the mic down to turn the camera back on at least to just say goodbye. Um, but um, I think I need new ones or something. It obviously didn't work. So if you have uh, thoughts or suggestions on ways that I can improve, I'm really working on the setup here. I'm curious what people thought of having this like iPad for diagrams versus, um, you know, I'm just gonna, um, let's just do this really quick. Uh, can I do this new, uh, won't let me do it. So I'm closing this out. I'm gonna do this new movie recording because this is gonna be my rote, mo oh, no, 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 come on. New movie recording. Oh yeah, yeah, I didn't have to close it. I could have just switched it to, oh, I bet you if I just plug in my, oh, wait a sec, hold on. Can I just op turn on the camera? Uh, yeah, ah, there we go, <laughs> look at this. Okay, so this is my setup a little bit. You can see the outdoors there. Um, this is like where I have a whiteboard and I would put another camera over there. This is my new light. Oh, you don't see any of this. <laughs> I'm not even showing you the screen, that's so sad. <laughs> oh, that was pathetic. Okay, so uh, here, here I am, um, uh, like here's me. Hi, uh, with my green screen, uh, and this is the space. That's the mic, and you can see uh, Gloria. <whistles> maybe Gloria's. Uh, maybe maybe uh, my wife took Gloria inside, or she's sleeping somewhere in the grass where I can't see her. Um, over here, I, I should just reverse the camera. God, I've never used like this. Uh, over here, you can see I have a whiteboard and uh, another tripod there, which I was trying to put another camera on, but I just need another, can I even put a little light over there? But this is, I knew this light is really awesome. Um, it, I have two of these, so I got a, and, and I have this one. I have some sound blankets and this is the camera there. So you can see the setup that I'm kind of um, working with now. Um, this is a little like uh, streaming PC. I'm gonna give this to my son to be for his school and homework computer and get a new streaming computer. Um, that can handle more inputs with a, with a real capture card. Um, so this hopefully gives you a little uh, quick um, behind the scenes. And since my camera's not working, um, now you can see. So, uh, and, and David asked, how many new studios have you had since December of 2019? So, and look at this, now my text, back. I had, <laughs> I had uh, do not disturb on so that my text messages wouldn't come through and one just came through. So um, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm wrapping up. Um, it is, so I started just recording videos in my little tiny office at NYU uh, in the Tisch building. Then I moved to a closet 
in the Tisch building. Then I moved to Brooklyn. So I had a different closet in Brooklyn, which still exists. That still exists. I just haven't had time to go in there. So I do have two studios right now, but this is my, my own space with my own equipment that I am putting all, you know, the sponsorship and the member stuff. Oh, right now, everything goes towards like building out this new studio and, uh, the, and also like the coding train team that's helping me with various things like video editing and social media and stuff like that. So um, thank you to Brilliant and thank you to all of you who watch and support. Um, I'm really hoping that this can become my own space that I can really have ownership over um, and kind of um, see where that leads. So uh, um, Malu asks how old I am. I am 48 years old. Uh, my dream, by the way, <laughs> I'm right this, my 50th birthday, I wanna go on a like train ride, maybe in like a Scot Scotland, or like through Alaska, I don't know. There's, I went on this amazing train in Norway once. I want to go on a like trip on a trip. So tell me all of your best like you know. I don't. I don't. It doesn't need to be luxury, but I just mean like an overnight where the train ride itself is the experience. Um, I think they have some. Yeah, I, I, I think I saw one that looked interesting in Scotland, but maybe there's. So let me know. Uh, thank you, William. Uh, uh, and so I, um, I want this to be the setup though where I can both record videos. So I do extra streams for members, which are my recording sessions, but I don't have all the equipment yet to do that. And I gotta stop, I gotta say goodbye. I love you all, every single one of you watching right now. I really appreciate you. And um, Trans-Siberian, India says, I should never been to India. It's a little, traveling is a little complicated right now uh, with the, global pandemic. I hope everybody's doing okay, but um, I hope to get back to it. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I'm going to go eat lunch. I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, you're going to hear the this dot song and see the outro thing. Again, if you want to support me, um, uh, uh, um, watch, send me a nice um, comment somewhere on YouTube. Like a video is a thing people can do. Uh, join, sign up for Brilliant. That's probably the primary way right now that you should support. Uh, and there's also the membership and all sorts of other things like that. Um, I got to stop talking. I got to find the this dot song. I'm sorry I didn't read any random numbers. By the way, if you are a member in the chat and you received your whistle, post about, uh, if you like it, it's like laser etched. Oh, hold on. I can do this now. I'm going to show you this whistle. I swear I'm, I swear I'm stopping. Uh, hopefully no more embarrassing text messages will come in. Uh, one more. Uh, where's the movie recording? Oh, I, I minimized it. I want to show this to you all. Uh, I need to. Um, okay, take a look at this. This is your, you can have, th this is your very, uh, my very own laser etched coding train, train whistle. <laughs> and it has on this side <laughs> a, um, I don't know why I can't, okay, there we go. Where's the camera on this thing? It has on this side, I should get out a portrait. Um, it has, and I'm sorry that this is inverted. This is a random walk pattern that is uh, using the random numbers from the random number book that I use. This is the number and this is the position in the book that started this pattern. Um, I'm giving these as gifts for uh, members, YouTube members of the coding train, starting with the conductor and above level, but maybe eventually everybody will get them. Uh, thank you for watching. I will see you uh, next time, next Friday, same time, right? Probably the same time next Friday, I will have eaten breakfast. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Goodbye. I don't have the music page open. I'm like totally lost here. Uh, there we go. As always, I always forget the this dot. This Muting dot, my microphone. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, song. this dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, song. this dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, 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 never forget this dot.
dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. Somebody compose that song for me. Goodbye, everybody. I've already turned the camera off, so I can't come back to say goodbye, but I'm ending the stream now. If I could just find where that button is, too.